podcast with Josh Fritz, where the scripture is honored, the lost are warned, the saints are fortified, false teachers are exposed, and the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified. Here's your host, Josh Fritz. Thank you for joining me. This is Josh Fritz of the Godcast with Josh Fritz. I want to show you something uh, that's pretty important uh, that you know about this. This is a a video I'm going to share with you. It's just to uh, remind you of what what the church at large is up against and um, what what can be done to get the message out there. What can be done to get the gospel message out there? And I'm going to alert you to a broadcasting company of which I'm very, I'm not familiar with it too well, but I am getting to get, I'm getting more familiar with it. And I want to watch this video with you just to touch light on what Far East, meaning the Asian part of the world. So that would be Thailand, North Korea, Vietnam, all those um, countries over there, uh, I would think Indonesia is a part of that, Japan, all the Far East is what they're calling it. I want to share with you something that's important, and let me do that right now. Uh, I think this is the right screen. Yes. Okay. Far East Broadcasting. This is a a company that's getting the gospel and airwaves in, into these parts of the world. Um, let me see if I can do this so I can copy the link. I want to watch this video with you, but I want to go to the, the first page here or what they do. Uh, basically, this is a company that which, um, here you get the history of it and their statement of faith and all of their information there. They're based out of California. Um, it's a, a company that wants to get the airwaves, uh, and control them as much as they possibly can to get the gospel into Asia. So it just tells you about the president and CEO. Just figured this would get you, um, uh, let you know that there are other things are being done around the world. There are ministries that are, you know, you might not hear about this too much. Maybe you hear about it on your Christian radio station. That's very possible. Um, but they... They have stories from around the world of what people do, where we work. So I was talking about Asia, right? So here is where they're trying to work at. Their goal is to be as transparent as possible. I'm reading their website. With you, our partners, we're also ensuring to do everything possible to protect our staff and the work God is doing through Far East Broadcasting. Due to the sensitive political and religious climate in many of the countries uh, they operate, some of their locations highlighted on the map right here, so I'm going to minimize my screen because you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so here you see this is all of the Far East, right? If we're looking at it from my perspective, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so here they say some of their locations highlighted on the map will not have dedicated pages on our website. This is done for the protection of their staff and the gospel work being done in these sensitive areas. So China is a big, big player in that regard. As a result, our country profiles list does not comp comprise all 49 countries that they currently minister to. So you'll see that here all the way on the left. If you go down here, you have Japan. You can click on each one. It'll tell you what's going on in each area. So here is their... This Japan is one that sticks out because this was mentioned at my church this past week. While Japan's official policy on religion su suggests freedom of choice, the truth is quite different. Those who attend a church are oftentimes ostracized by family and friends. This is especially acute in a group-oriented society like Japan's where people make decisions based on the good of the group, not the individual. If someone belongs to a group out of the norm, such as Christianity, he is often cut off from familial Familial, I can't pronounce that. Familial? Family attachments, I'll just say that. This makes Far East Broadcasting's role all the more important as we try to both 
a teaching ministry and a worship service for a large number of listeners fearful of attending a church. So a lot of pressure there. And then you get a video there of what's going on. So they're looking for donations as well. So it's just, it's just something to bring you uh, up to speed. You know, you click on each country, you can see, I'm sure China is very severe. Let's click on China just to make sure. China closed its doors to foreign missionaries in 1948. Far East Broadcasting moved its Asian base of operations to the Philippines. Far East Broadcasting's first broadcasts over local stations went on the air June 4, 1948 in Manila. That's the Philippines. International broadcasts to China started in 1949 with the help of Chinese Filipino Christians and soon expanded to most of Southeast Asia. By the end of 1949, Far East Broadcasting had 27 languages on the air. So, China's China's in a tough spot, and you've you've got a lot of issues there. So, it's a party. Let's say it's it's where Christianity is stifled, just stifled. So, going back here, I want to look at one more region before I go back to that video, so you can be aware. I'm bringing this up because we live in a country where we're free. We are free, and we have the freedom to do to worship. We can get together. We can stay home and not worship. I mean, that, that's that been happening lately. Um, but this, these are areas of the world that are just uh, just ravaged. And I, as you can see here, clearly what I read before is true. North Korea is not listed. I wonder why. So there is not listed out of protection of the region. So if I click here, South Korea will give you a feeling of what's going on there. In 1956, Seoul, Seoul, Korea, uh, Seoul, South Korea was established to broadcast the gospel to North Korea, China, Russia, and Mongolia, countries where missionaries were not allowed. Since then, Korea has grown into a major Christian radio network broadcasting to 13 cities in South Korea. See, I want you to... Let's watch this video. This is not the video I was looking at, but I want you to watch this video. Ugh, it's unbelievable. I can't watch it. All right. That's not there, so we're not going to be able to listen to that one. It's the account that I have. All right, so I'll have to somehow figure that out. Uh, let's go back to that other one. I'm sure that's a... A tough thing to, to watch there. So let's go 75 years of history. You'll get to know what this is about. So let's play this video here. Uh, as you see here, until all have heard. Let's do this. Five minutes long. We believe Jesus Christ is the hope of salvation for all, and that every man, woman, and child in the world must have a chance to hear his gospel. We've been reaching people where they are for 75 years on the devices that they use, the one that they've already got in their pocket. If we can get God's Word into the device that they're carrying in their hands, that's the only way to get it through their ears and into their heart. Today, four billion people are within reach of FEBC broadcasts. Men, women, and children are listening right now in over 120 languages to programs created by a local believer. In the last five years alone, we've received more than 10 million responses to our gospel programs across 49 countries. In 1945, three men founded the Far East Broadcasting Company with an audacious goal, to preach the gospel inside China using an emerging technology called radio. But for years, they received no responses from listeners in China. Was anyone even listening? But the faith of FEBC's founders was unwavering, and by the 1970s, China opened, and responses flew in, first by the thousands, and then by the millions. And now, you see that Christians are made inside China. So amazing. In the 80s, FEBC made international headlines with a 300,000-person mass conversion to the Christian faith among Asia's Hmong people. In the 90s, FEBC presence was established in post-Soviet countries like Russia. In the 2000s, Mongolia had gone from 20 Christians to 40,000 in two decades. 
In the 2010s, FEBC has seen immense growth in Central Asia, with five new stations and millions within reach 24 hours a day in Kyrgyzstan alone. When the Far East Broadcasting Company first started, our primary focus was China. But we saw how effective using media platforms to convey the gospel of Jesus Christ into the hearts of the people, it has spread all across the 1040 window. Today, the potential audience is in the billions. FEBC is constantly researching what device people are using to listen, and we meet them there. Our programs are optimized for internet streaming, social media, and for mobile devices, and the response online is staggering. FEBC Russia received over a million responses last year online. FEBC Korea estimates last year's online audience at over 10 million listeners. Listeners in China are downloading Christian content through our apps over 13 million times a year. That's more engagement than the largest social media account in the world receives. Far beyond the urban areas where our listeners stream internet radio, there's millions who have never heard about Jesus. They are truly the hardest to reach. We have a 300 million gods, but I never knew who is Jesus Christ. We're constantly looking for new ways to reach the furthest forgotten areas, like in Indonesia, one of the most heavily forested regions on Earth. This is where we recently put gospel content on over a hundred rural radio stations. Because of the difficult places that FEBC is serving in, where persecution has become the norm, we see a tremendously different response from the people. I had the privilege to meet pastors of churches in Pakistan who have had bombs go off in the front. I've met with North Korean refugees who have come to South Korea and started small churches and gatherings who have personally told me about the impact that radio had on their lives. We were strictly forbidden to use the name of Christ. Sering alkitab yang dia baca dirampas, dibuang, dihancurin, dilempar. Tapi Lenda saya lihat sungguh luar biasa. Dia tetap setia, masih tetap sembunyi-sembunyi baca alkitab. These are the stories that inspire us, that drive us, that keep us motivated toward pursuing that 75-year-old mission of proclaiming the gospel boldly to the least reached people around the earth. There's still so many men, women, and children who are desperate to hear about Jesus for the very first time. So we will press on in the remote villages, in the forgotten places, amongst the hardest to reach and the persecuted regions, until all have heard. Okay, so there you have it. I mean, we sit in a country where we've gone so much, so far backwards regarding uh, the way we live our lives, the way we know God. And these people sit in, some of them sit in just unbeknownst to us um, struggles because of their oppressive regimes that are around them. And I. I just wanted that to bring that to your attention because it should tug your heart to know that we have brothers and sisters that are in different lands that need the encouragement, they need the prayer, and frankly, we need to, we got to do something about it. So I'm bringing it to your attention because it's been brought to my attention and I want to share it with you. There's all information here that you can get involved, you can contact them, you can donate, you can click their donate button there. I'm going to provide the link in the description of this video, and if I forget to do that, shame on me. But uh, this is uh, this is important, and the gospel message regarding the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ has uh, is the one message that'll never change. It's one way, 
was only one way that we can be truly redeemed from our sin and the need for repentance and faith in Jesus Christ to be called by him and the only way you're going to that's going to be done is it has to be heard we know from Romans 10:17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and here's the verse here three verses prior how then can they call on the one they have not believed in and how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard Romans 10:14 so salvation is through Jesus Christ alone and uh, it's truly a, a, a great work and un- a great undertaking that this company is doing. So pray about that. Pray that these people get to hear the message. And it's, uh, I just wanted to bring your attention because it's profoundly af- affected me in the last couple of days uh, about hearing about this. And uh, one way to let you all know about it is to share the news with you and to pray for our brothers and sisters that are persecuted, and to pray for those that have never heard. So what should that tell us to do in this season that we're in, in December of 2020? If you can't help where you are now, you can help elsewhere uh, and look to advance the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, not just in your house, which is where it starts, and in your neighborhood, in the local church, but you can also help somebody far, far away across the expanse of the world that you live in. So think outside the box there and uh, look to the other. Look at somebody else and help them out. So God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been uh, helpful and encouraging and uh, thought-provoking in order for you to look on the outside there and help your brother and sister that you may not know. Um the website there is febc.org slash donate. So look at that, and God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.